everyone, this is Matt, back on the patio once again, and as you can see with the light around me, it's a much more pleasant day than was the last time I was doing a review outside. Uh, not raining, a little overcast, but actually an overall pretty nice day here in uh, September in South Florida. Now, uh, enough about the weather, now this is edition 5 of the Pumpkin Fest uh, beer anthology that I'm doing today, and today I am doing another beer out of the New York, um, actually this is out of the uh, Pennsylvania area, uh, I stand corrected, and this is uh, Weyerbacher. Now, a lot of you are probably familiar with Weyerbacher. They make uh, quite, quite a bit of nice beers. They make uh, the Blithering Idiot. They, they've traditionally, uh, from what I have had, in not extreme beers, but beers that are uh, a little heftier than your normal beer, the uh, Blithering Idiot, which is a uh, barley wine style. Beer, which is actually quite strong, about 11 uh, percent. Mary Monks, which is a Belgian style uh, beer, which is comes about 9 percent. And uh, I believe they have the Sipco. Uh, it's an IPA, which is another strong. It's, been, uh, it's close to a double IPA, in my opinion. It's pretty strong as well. Now this is the uh, I already showed you once, but showing you the Imperial Pumpkin Ale, courtesy of Weyerbacher. Now this brings in at about eight, uh, at 8 percent ABV. Um, just doing some research, I mean, a lot of people ask, like, oh, what's an Imperial? Like, and from what I pretty much have gotten when it comes to an Imperial beer, is that Imperial beer is from, you know, oh, nice small time. I don't know if you're going to be able to get that, but probably not. But it did. Ooh, that was a nice. I'll just add a few a few minutes just to kind of get it, um, really get the flavors in. Now, back to it being an Imperial, I always think of a high ABV beer. When I think of Imperials, and pretty much whenever I looked at an Imperial beer, the Southern Tier is a perfect example of this. Robust flavors, use of a lot of hops, a lot of malts, gets the ABD of almost every single uh, Imperial beer you've, that you may or may not have had by Southern Tier brings in about 8 to 11 percent, which is pretty extreme, almost the equivalent of probably what a wine is. So, but now this enough about Southern Tier. This is uh, the way of Bakker out of uh, Pennsylvania. Uh, now this beer is brewed with uh, pumpkin and spices. The notable spices are cinnamon, nutmeg, uh, cardamom, and cloves. Now, I was just doing some research about cardamom. Cardamom is very similar to a spearmint taste, very resinous. Ooh, look at this, we get some nice head on that bay, that way right there. No, okay, about two finger, well, about a finger and a half, I'd say, of head on there. I'm drinking this out of a sniffer here just to hopefully get some of the extra uh, flavor or smell and a taste out of it. Very pleasant. Uh, you do get a lot of clove right away. I notice clove and cinnamon are the dominant uh, smells in this beer. And as you can see the beer, if you hold it up to the light, it is quite red. It is very, actually very red to a uh, dark, to a reddish brown, almost an auburn, I would say. No well, they really do. This is number five, the Weyabacher Imperial Pumpkin Ale. Mm. Quite good. Much more maltier than the last few beers that I've had. A little sweeter. That nutmeg is very, very prevalent in this beer. I, I, like, I love the smell of nutmeg, the taste of nutmeg. I like it a lot. Very sweet, but the, the taste of nutmeg. Now, with the, with the uh, cardamom, which I thought was the most interesting ingredient used in this actual beer, um, like I said, you should, you should you could expect some spearmint, almost some some uh, chai, like a chai tea or chai tea, should I say? A uh, chai tea, of course, you know you can get that at your Starbucks. It has that very pumpkiny taste to it, a spicy taste. I'm not a big fan of chai in particular. I, I do not like it one bit. It's just so pungent, like the taste of it, like it takes away from everything else, the actual taste of the, of the chai. But, this is actually very, very nice. The smell, very, oh, like the actual smell is very alcoholic, as a matter of fact, that sweet alcohol syrupy, resiny kind of smell to it. But the taste, with the nutmeg, it almost reminds me of like a pumpkin eggnog. Uh, if you will. Hmm. I've had this before. Never reviewed it, but 
I remember having it before, and I did not like it one bit. Like to me, it just did not appeal to my to my taste. But upon second review, it's actually very, very nice beer. It doesn't have that pumpkin pie taste like the Southern Tier does, but it has a taste all in of itself. The, the nutmeg, like I said, is very prevalent. And like I said, it reminds me of like, like an eggnog. Like you could almost call this like maybe a pumpkin eggnog beer, in my opinion. It's very nice. The back end taste is what makes the entire beer though. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people have done the reviews on this. I like some of the eggnog. You are, and you also get a nice vanilla almost taste to it, like a vanilla nutmeg taste. Goes down smooth. It's got some decent lacing with the hops and everything like that in it, but this is a very pleasant beer. The 8% ABV doesn't really make it undrinkable at all. In fact, I think the, the sweetness of the alcohol is actually enhancing this beer. For being an imperial, it goes down very, very easy. I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure if you had two or three of these, you'd be feeling pretty good after that, but... <coughs> Sorry, that was Delhi from earlier. I feel so classy drinking from a snifter too. I think this drinking from a snifter, it brings the actual flavors out also too. I need to really get another one or just get a goblin or something like that. Because it is making this beer taste the hell, hell of it. It's like, you know, do this, kind of give it a little, little swirl. It gets the head back up a little bit, gets those flavors out. Very smooth. Yeah, White Walker is known for their extre extreme light type beers. And they're drinking this again more of a review type setting as opposed to more of a social situation. Upon second review, this beer is much more much more pleasant. Some decent lacing in there. Nothing too big, but yeah, that was that was a damn good beer. Much better upon second review than just drinking it for the sake of drinking it. The nutmeg did it for me. That was the vanilla taste, the nutmeg taste. It was like the perfect pairing of the alcohol with the nutmeg to incorporate and like just not not much of a pumpkin taste. <laughs> I mean, I think pumpkin takes a backseat to the spices more than anything else. You do get a slight pumpkin taste, but I think in a lot of these pumpkin beers, it's more about the gimmick of like, hey, this is pumpkin. And like I've said in other reviews, with the pumpkin, it's more of a side when you when when you actually put the spices into it, like a like a, like I said before, a pumpkin pie. The actual spices overtake the pumpkin taste, and then you just taste the spices, whatever is more prevalent in it. And like I said, nutmeg in this is the most prevalent of the spices, and over, you know, it balances very well. It's a well, well balanced beer. So that's about it. Um, it was such a beautiful day here in Florida. Thought, you know, doing it out on the patio would be great again. So, uh, once again, this was number five. I got two more beers for you guys. Um, not sure what order I'm going to be doing them in, but they will be beers that I have not... No, I, I have had these beers. I haven't reviewed them yet, but I have had them. So I kind of have an idea, but I'm just going to do it on camera for you guys. So that's about it. Hope you guys enjoyed. Remember to uh, subscribe, uh, give me comments, give me feedback. Tell me what you think about the uh, pumpkin beers. Hopefully I can answer some questions for you guys. That's about it. So enjoy yourself. Have a happy weekend. And